NetSuite's latest released, 2024.1. My name is Jack Loudon. I'm a solution consultant here at Eureka Solutions. It's nice to meet you all for those who haven't already, already met. So if this is your first time being in one of these webinars, um, here's our agenda today. For those who have already been, um, you'll know the, the usual script. Um, we'll begin with an initial overview on what the release is and some of the and the normalities around it. We'll then jump on to our top 10 highlights of the latest release. And at the end, we'll finish with a Q&A. So feel free to drop any questions into the Q&A tab. Of course, if there is anything that I discussed today that sounds of interest, whether that be modules or little pieces of functionality, feel free to follow up um, after the webinar to your account manager. Um, but just to let you know that this, with it being recorded, um, you will be sent the recordings out afterwards. Okay, doke. So on to the release. Um, everybody will be uh, upgraded between the months of February and April. And this is usually done in phases of one per month. And the exact upgrade dates for each user uh, will be provided three weeks in advance. And um, so you've got plenty of time to check that um, everything is in shape in your account for that upgrade and to check any um, details of the release as well. On the uh, on your dashboard, you'll also be able to add the new release portlet. And what this allows you to do is access some sneak peeks, release notes and test plans. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like um, in a, a future slide. But it's very easy to do. It is just personalised on your dashboard and click new release. In addition to this, uh, administrators can also request to access the release preview, and this will allow you to test all of the kind of new release uh, upgrades and enhancements on your system the way it is currently built. So it just allows you to kind of test your key processes and customizations. Of course, if you have any kind of customizations which are unique and bespoke to your business, it's kind of vital to test these prior to the release. What you've also got is some customer scheduled maintenance. Um, and this just means that prior, like 72 hours in advance of your upgrade date, you will be able to um, request a, a, a date change for when your release will be upgraded. Um, and that's just because perhaps you it might be a very busy day scheduled for you and you might be doing month end periods where you don't have time to check anything. So that is available to you. And just a quick disclaimer, um, the new features may be subject to change. So these release notes are reviewed weekly. They've been provided for the past three or four weeks, and we have seen changes in the release notes um, week on week. So I will provide you our top 10. That doesn't mean that they will be in the release, but at this point, the most, most latest release notes were available. An additional disclaimer, um, there will be a couple um, enhancements that I'm going to mention that are going to be available in the US um, but not quite available in the UK and the only reason I'm showing you them is because NetSuite have kind of advertised and marketed them quite heavily because they are positive steps in the, uh, the right direction but just to make you aware of what those changes are but they're not yet available in the UK at this moment in time and I will make you aware of that. As mentioned, there is the new release portlet, and this is what it will look like on your dashboard. And you can see there, there's many different links to different parts of NetSuite where you want to see blogs and um, with more information on each release highlight that I might uh, show you today, any training resources, the release notes themselves, etc. Okay, so the main topic for today, I guess, we're going to start with our top 10, going from 10 down to 1. Now, number 10, we have as build capture enhancements. Now, I've put this as number 10, as although it's um, probably one of the more exciting features that NetSuite is preparing for us, it's only available in the US at this moment in time. Now, if you're already using uh, OCR uh, invoice capture tool, such as Zone Capture, or formerly known as Fast4 Scanning Capture, um, you'll know that this is NetSuite hasn't been able to provide this functionality to their UK customers as of yet. Now, 
they did release it, I think, a year ago. Um, and at that time, we saw that it wasn't quite as developed as many of the other uh, third-party tools that are on the market at this moment in time. Now, these um, enhancements, um, as you see, such as new filters on the scan vendor's bill page, that, that essentially is when you're looking at the list of bills um, that have been captured. They've, li they've literally just put on some filters such as um, by vendor or by transaction type, etc. Um, and other new fields on the review bill page, so if you're imagining um, the information that's been captured from the invoice onto the bill, you'll see that uh, fields such as custom segments, PO number, discount date, posting period, memo, project task, that's all kind of functionality that's available in some of the third-party um, apps right now for OCR scanning capture. Um, so we'll see that although NetSuite is really kind of bringing this on and developing it, we really hope that they're catching up soon and then bringing it to the UK before bringing a, kind of, a, a, a functionality that probably isn't as good as some of the tools available. But we will make you all aware when this is likely to happen. We're unsure when that will be at this moment in time. In addition to this, um, on the module, they've also enhanced the user experience um, by al allowing you to link POs to specific lines on the uh, invoice. So if you've got one invoice from a supplier and maybe you've got multiple POs, you can then use a pop-up window, which allows you to attach that PO to each specific line of the invoice. Number nine is costed uh, bill of material enhancements. Now this was a suite app which was released fairly recently um, and there were uh, some enhancements made to it in the previous release in 2023.2. Um, so there's been a couple more um, enhancements made to, so this should hopefully be of interest to those that are maybe using the suite app. And it just allows you to simulate reports such as a cost of bill of material report by modifying the unit cost values for non-assembly item and also by changing the simulate build quantity fields value. It just means that you're not having to actually go in and change any of the data that's currently within the system. You can actually just simulate that report um, just by this, with these small tweaks to see uh, any changes that, that this might make. In addition, there's also a new column in the material cost subtab, um, which is quantity for build. And this allows you to see um, the value of the product build quantity and quantity per top level assembly. On number eight, um, so they've been making some enhancements to the electronic bank payments module. And what you'll now find is that if you're using the global bill, uh, global bill payment processing, you'll now be able to have that approval routine and batch uh, processing um, available in there as with the normal bill payments. Um, and this will also allow you to use both the primary and secondary entity banks and batches from that global ba uh, pay payment batch list page. Um, that now, once this release is up and running, um, if you're currently using this functionality, the existing uh, EFT batch processing will no longer include transactions linked to an entity bank in the EFT subter. In addition to this, um, there's also the functionality to mask the company bank account numbers and entity bank account numbers from those who are not required to, to see it. Number seven, um, this is a quite a short and, short and sweet one. Um, what this is, it's sweet billing has now had an enhancement to allow you to uplift um, the subscription at any point of the term. So previously you were only able to provide uplifts at the point of renewal, which is quite an inflexible uh, bit of functionality. Whereas now with sweet billing, you can now provide an uplift, whether that be such as CPI increases if, as one example, um, so you can now do that at any point in the subscription. For number six, um, we've got the revenue recognition field mapping enhancements. And this might be a bit of a lot of jargon if you're not currently using the revenue recognition functionality within NetSuite. Um, however, the following enhancements have been made to the rev rec field mapping functionality. There's now a new record page, which lets you create the map records that are tracked with system notes, rather than just the field mapping uh, features that were on there. Um, there's a now a new list page, which contains all of the field maps and their relevant details. And what this essentially allows you to do is view each map record directly from the map page, rather than having to go into each map directly. 
A couple of other things have been added, such as the transaction type and the start and end date. Uh, so these have also been added to the list, and that gives you visibility of the transaction type that the mapping is applied to, and also the specific date range between the start and end date as well. Finally, you can also import and export these uh, field maps using a CSV file. Following on from that, we've got number five, which is the work order CSV import. And what you can now do is you can now import work orders via CSV and also display a name, which can be added to the transaction line tables. Now, this can be helpful if you're not already caught an integration to an outer system. If, you, if you're using that work orders module, um, then you should then be able to use that CSV functionality. And number four, and um, we've got some enhancements to fixed assets, and this will be uh, probably a big relief to those using the four, four, five uh, periodly format. Um, so what that now allows us to do is it now allows you to depreciate um, your and view your net book, value, net book values in the four, four, five weeks period rather than in calendar months. In addition to this, we're also able to bulk um, asset revaluation. So instead of having to go into all of your fixed assets one by one and revalue that, you can now just uh, import a CSV file and that will revalue multiple assets within the one transaction. In addition to that, there's also been um, some enhancements with the CSV reports. So you can now add custom columns um, to the report templates using the customized report template page. And these are now reflected in the depreciation monthly report, the NBV report, and the PD report. On to number three. And the following three are more kind of UI enhancements. So it's something that we've been expecting from NetSuite for quite a while, um, as some the enhancing UIs and making it a bit more modern. Um, so I think from the following three, it's going to a some positive step forward um, into probably maybe perhaps baby steps and getting it in and getting it in correct before applying it to the rest of the system. But without further ado, we'll discuss what they are. So the number three is page search enhancements. Um, so what you can now do is on your global search bar, you can collapse certain sections um, from the global search bar. So if you can imagine when you are um, searching for something and it's quite a common name, it can be quite difficult, even when using pre prefixes, depending on the amount of data in your system, to find the record or transaction that you're looking for. Now, what this looks like, as you can see on the global search, I'll just get my mouse up. So you can see that there's a drop down for that there. So it just adds, um, it allows you to kind of filter out some of the fluff that you might have in the system that you're not really interested in. Number two um, is a favourites feature available in the drop-down list. So what this is going to allow you to do is select up to five favourite items in the customer add multiple and items field on sales orders. Um, so this can be enabled in the general preferences by the administrator, and then you can then add them to, uh, to your specific role. Um, so if you're, um, so when you're adding a favourite, it's only going to be applicable to you. It's not going to be applicable to other people in your organisation that are using NetSuite. And when I say next week making kind of baby steps in the right direction, this is, for example, adding the favourites onto the sales orders. What we would expect to see is moving on to the uh, purchase orders and other parts of the system uh, in future releases as well. So a better idea of what I'm talking about. Um, as you can see here, we've got a sales order with the drop-down list for the customer, and we can see a list of favourite customers. Um, so you can see that we've got two out of the five. Whoever's uh, done this screenshot has been lazy and picked two of the top ones that we would see anyway. But it, what that allows us to do is scroll them through a heavy list of um, customers there. And that'd be available for the items and on the multiple items uh, tab as well. And finally, with number one, we have text enhance. And I'm pretty sure if you've been keeping up to date with any of NetSuite's releases um, or notes on this release, for example, you will have realized that they are bringing AI into NetSuite um, to really kind of keep up with the rest of the competition as well. Um, so what text enhance is going to do is it's going to use generative AI to assist with writing business content within NetSuite. And that's going to be, um, for example, on item records to give sales descriptions, 
um, or purchase descriptions and any other kind of business content which would require a description of an item or a customer, for example. And what it's going to do is it's going to use the information already on that record. And what then you can give it instructions on how clear you want to make it if you want more information, etc. Now, major caveat with this at this uh, at the moment in time, and that's because it's only available in North America for now. And at, to be honest, at this point, as much as we appreciate this enhancement, um, we've seen some videos and it's not quite ready, I would say. Um, I saw a video on LinkedIn of this the other day and it wasn't reacting the same in the way that the guy was wanting um, the AI to uh, produce the content. Um, so maybe it is best for the US and Canada to just kind of treat this, uh, to treat them as the guinea pigs and make sure that it's up and running properly before it moves over to the UK. But as a trend, um, with anything that happens, uh, with any new functionality within this, we, it typically does start in the US and then the UK is normally next in line. To give you an idea of what that looks like, if you haven't already seen anything uh, like it uh, on LinkedIn or any of the other release notes, what it allows you to do is give some instructions. Um, so they've used a, a handy widget, one, two, three, four, five, and it's gonna then um, provide a description of that. So you could, for example, write your own description and ask uh, NetSuite to clean it up so that it's more reader friendly. Um, you could ask them to just generate it based off of the instructions you've given them. And they can also make it longer or make it shorter, depending on how concise you want the information to be on that. So thanks very much for your time today. Um, that's been our top 10. Of course, if you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A panel. I'll just open that up to see if there are any. Um, of course, if there's anything else, please feel free to get in contact. Um, your account managers will always be available. And thank you for your, again for your time.